Welcome everybody to Courageous Church Online. We like to start every week by giving a quick shout out to all of our first time watchers and guests. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. In the next few moments that we have together, we're gonna sing a little bit in worship and then I'm gonna return and continue our brand new series here at Courageous Church called It Is Well. If you have any questions about our church or any prayer requests today, please feel free to use that comment section to let us know. We are a people that love to pray. We are passionate about prayer. You can also send us a direct message or email us as well at info at courageouschurch.com. If you've been watching with us, we'd also like to encourage you to fill out a digital connect card to let us know who you are and how we can best serve you and come alongside you as a church. You can do that at our website, courageouschurch.com slash connect. Join me now as we open with a word of prayer before we go into a time of worship together. Father God, we thank you for today. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit will come now and speak to our hearts and minister your life and healing and hope and courage to us right where we're at. And we give you praise for that and for every victory that you bring about in our lives. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said amen and amen. I fix my eyes upon the cross I'm reaching out with all I've got I'm letting go to start again I need your love, that's why I'm here Waiting outside my life it calls So while I'm here, I'll give my all. You are my peace within the storm. Here at the cross, I find my home. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. You are greater, Jesus, you are greater than it all, than it all. Grace and mercy found me, oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. Grace and mercy found me, oh, the blood. Jesus is greater. Lord, I believe you rose again. So I don't believe this is the end. You never fail, you have a plan. My life you You are greater. Yeah. For you 
some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of our Lord. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and all the glory forever. We are so excited to be continuing our latest series here at Courageous Church called It Is Well. Throughout this series, we're going to talk about our soul and what it means to care for it in the way that God designed us to. Last week, we talked about the fact that you don't just have a soul, you are a soul. And as a living soul, God wants you to prosper and be in good health. We looked at three realities that we need to build our life upon, being the beloved of God knowing that he wants all things to go well with us, and knowing that he wants us to be in good health. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 reminds us, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Understanding that it is the heartbeat of God for his people to prosper and be in health is key to what we're going to be discussing today. And that is the nature of what Pastor Pete Scazzaro calls your shadow. The title of my message today is Face Your Shadow. First off, what is the shadow? Your shadow is the accumulation of untamed emotions, less than pure motives and thoughts that, while largely unconscious, strongly influence and shape our behaviors. It is the damaged but mostly hidden version of who you really are. And here's the deal. Everyone has a shadow. The truth is, if you were born into this world, you were born into it broken and distorted by sin and as a result of the actions and influence of others. Selfishness is your native tongue. Well, don't believe me? Just ask a toddler if you can take away their toy. How do they typically respond? That's mine. The shadow is concerned typically about one thing and one thing alone. Me. It's all about me. And if left untamed, it can lead to greater brokenness and even distorted living. The shadow can also erupt in various forms. Sometimes it reveals itself in sinful behaviors, such as judgmental perfectionism, outbursts of anger, jealousy, resentment, lust, greed, or even bitterness. Anybody relate to a few of those things? I know for most of my life, I have really battled perfectionism and outbursts of anger. Those have been two areas of my shadow that God has really had to deal with me on and still dealing with me on. And we're going to look at why in just a few moments. I wonder what kinds of behaviors you've had to wrestle with. Maybe it hasn't been directly sinful behaviors, but perhaps it's come out in more subtle ways, like a need to rescue other people and be liked by others. What about the need to be noticed or an inability to stop working or a tendency toward isolation? Anybody relate to any of those things? Well, sure you do. If we're honest with ourselves, and I really hope that you can be, in fact, it's my hope that we can all let down our masks and be honest about where we're at so that we can find greater healing and hope in Christ. So if we're honest with ourselves, all of us have areas of wounds or weaknesses that we have to deal with. 
So your issue may not be blatant sin, but you still may have areas of your soul that have been wounded or hurt or even weaknesses that have never been addressed that cause your shadow to dominate you. A lot of times, out of our desire to protect ourselves from feeling vulnerable or even exposed, we allow our shadow to continue in ways that are not very healthy for our souls. As we said at the start, and as I will return to throughout our time together, God wants things to go well with your soul. He really does, which means that we have to get honest and be open with our families and the faith community that God's placed us in. This is why I believe community is so essential. Because community is not just about coming together to have a party and to have a good time. Community is about learning how to grow together with others who are on the same path of healing as you. Some may even be a little further ahead of you, and they can help you get to where God wants you to go. More on that in a moment. So your shadow is not really your sin, but it is the part of you that will lead you into sin and cause you to miss out on God's best for your life. A lot of people today struggle to reconcile the fact that God actually has a perfect and a complete standard for their life. We spoke about it last week, and it's Jesus. God's goal for all of our lives is that we would become more like Jesus. Just listen to what the scriptures say in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 29. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Did you catch the language Paul uses here to describe God's goal or purpose for your life? It's to be conformed to the image of the Son. People of God, that's the goal, that we would continue to look more and more like Jesus. So how do we do that? Well, we have to face our shadow. Today I want to make our time together particularly helpful and practical by looking at a few things we need to understand about our shadow, but also a few things that we can do about it as well. To begin, I want to make this statement to us. You are more than your shadow. Typically in Christianity, we see two major camps regarding our shadow. The first camp typically says things like, I am totally bad and depraved and terribly sinful and no good thing dwells inside me. Well, we see that in Romans chapter 7 verse 18 and we see that that is particularly true. The second camp tends to declare things like, I am totally good. I am a new creation in Christ, a saint who is wonderfully and uniquely made. We see that is also true according to 2 Corinthians 5.17 and Psalm 139. Both views have elements of truth in them, but holding on to one without the other leads us into biblical distortion. To have a healthy perspective about who we are, including our shadow side, we have to hold both together in a healthy tension. The full truth is that at any given time, most of us are a mixture of these tensions and contradictions. As Pastor Pete does in his book, I'll use myself as an example. Oftentimes, I can be really vulnerable and open. Other times, I can be defensive and closed off. Most of the time, I'm extremely loving. But there can be other times where I've acted unkindly or been even a little bit prejudiced. Usually, I'm a super hard worker who goes above and beyond to do the right thing. But sometimes, I procrastinate and put things off. Anybody feel me on any of that? The truth is we are a tension of multiple or mixed realities most of the time. I actually like the way Paul says it in 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Friends, we are jars of clay, easily broken, easily shattered, but in the hands of God, fully moldable to showcase this all-surpassing power that belongs to him and him alone. What we come to realize is that these things that constitute our brokenness or our weakness really become the framework or the trophy case for God's power and grace to be put on display. So make no mistake about it. People of God, we are trophies of grace. And yet, in the same way, God is not done with us. He's still conforming, still shaping, still redeeming, still molding, still making all things new. And I love that about Jesus. And I love that that's what he invites us to. He invites us into a living relationship with him where we learn to yield and surrender our lives more fully to his lordship and care each and every day. So we don't ignore our shadow, we face it. But we do so knowing that we are more than our shadow. But what happens when we choose to ignore our shadow? Well, how do we typically see this represented in our life, in our daily life? We see it come out in denial, 
in minimizing, in blaming yourself, blaming others, rationalizing, distorting, or even projecting our own hurts and fears onto others. When this happens, you'll become defensive and unrealistic about where you're really at and how your soul is truly doing. Ultimately, you'll begin to put up walls and lean on defense mechanisms to cloak and mask yourself from truly being seen and known. But the truth is this, God wants you to know him and be known by him. And the way that happens is through intimacy. The difficulty with intimacy is that we don't know how to be intimate. In other words, we don't know how to let people see us and love us the way God desires us to be loved. And as a result, we have a hard time loving others the way God wants them to be loved. We spoke about this a little bit last week when I talked about learning and understanding your love language. Additionally, intimacy requires honesty and transparency and vulnerability and allowing things about yourself that you've tried to keep hidden to come into the light. And that's scary. And it involves you risking letting people down or even causing them to think differently about the real you. I have a pastor in my life, and he always says this, Jason, you have to have people in your life that know you and know you. What do I mean by that? You need people that can tell you no, as in N-O. And you need people that know you, that K-N-O-W-U. In other words, people that you're honest and real with. So let me ask you, do you have any of those kinds of people in your life? If not, you need to seek them out. They're not just going to show up and say, hey, I'm here to mentor and help you. The truth is you have to pursue a relationship with people that you can be your full self with. And this sometimes requires an investment of time. This is one of the reasons people, I believe, ignore their shadow because it takes too much time to acknowledge it and be real with other people they trust. It's much easier to just get on with your business and to move along and pretend like things are fine. But hear my pastoral heart on this. Don't do that. Don't go on ignoring what's happening beneath the surface of your life. It's not worth it, and it will only serve to destroy you and the people you love. Ignoring your shadow will also cause you to be blind to the shadow of others. This blindness causes us to idealize certain people as if they don't have a shadow like the rest of us. We often feel worse about ourselves as a result, falling into a quicksand of introspection in which we sink even deeper under the weight of our own shadow. Or what happens is that we become judgmental of others' imperfections, even gossiping about them out of our own jealousy and insecurity. We forget that they too have a shadow that leaves them feeling as inadequate and as vulnerable as we do. We see this oftentimes with celebrity worship or when we place people up on a pedestal and then we're hurt or disappointed when they fall or fail us because we've been blinded to the fact that they have a shadow just like us and we didn't see it, or maybe we even chose not to see it or not to believe it. This is why it's so dangerous that we don't just applaud ability or talent or giftedness within the church, but that we learn how to cultivate a culture that values integrity and serving people and doing things that nobody sees or applauds. It's also why Jesus was such a big proponent for praying in secret and blessing people in secret and fasting in secret. We do these things not to be seen by others, but to be seen only by God. And in return, it helps us to develop a healthy, hidden life in Christ Jesus, which is so crucial, guys. So what happens when we choose to face our shadow? Well, number one today, we break the shadow's hidden power. The truth is this, you cannot change what you are not aware of. Can I repeat that again today? You cannot change what you are not aware aware of. In his book, The Emotionally Healthy Leader, Pete Scazzaro says, exposing the shadow to the light of Jesus is the first and most important step we must take in order to receive the gift of choosing to face our shadow. 1 John 5, 7 says this, this is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Walking in the light means bringing your skeletons out of the closet and having them dance at the party. Friends, that's the invitation we see in Jesus. It's to come into the light. It's to walk in the light. It's to remain in the light. And the scriptures tell us here that if we do that, we'll have fellowship with each other. That means relationships will work. And that's super important. And it says that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin, not just some, but all sin. Number two today, 
we discover the shadow's hidden treasures. In Isaiah 45, verse 3, God promises, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. This promise is especially true when we choose to enter the dark places of the shadow and allow the places to become, or allow those places to become tools in our service and ministry to God. A lot of times, what we think are our greatest strengths can actually also be our greatest weaknesses and vice versa. We see this in the life of Paul, the apostle. Paul was headstrong, assertive, bold, confident, even stubborn at times for the sake of the gospel. But those things considered strengths could also be his greatest weaknesses and sometimes got him into arguments and into trouble. And yet it was precisely Paul's weaknesses that God used all the more. Paul often remarked about God humbling him by allowing a thorn in his flesh to continue. We don't know exactly really what that was, but listen to Paul's comments about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Three times I plead with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am. Am strong. Did you catch that today? When we are weak, we are strong. God's power is made perfect in our weakness. So as it turns out, Paul's shadow was not a source of shame. Instead, it became a source of healthy boasting, becoming the conduit or the channel through which Jesus's power and life could flow through him. Church, may it be said of us that when we are weak, we are actually strong. This, oft, this is often why I believe God wants to encourage us to be strong and courageous because it's his strength, it's his courage resting upon our lives. It's his power being made perfect in our weakness. This is why we can actually find and value the secret treasures of our shadow. So in closing today, I want to encourage you to stay with Jesus as you face your shadow. Each time you make a choice to face rather than ignore your shadow, you follow Jesus to the cross. The cross is often an experience of nakedness, vulnerability, pain, scourging, loneliness, fear, darkness, and it always leads to death. There are definitely seasons when God's going to use these things to, ex to strip us and expose yet another layer of our shadow. The most important task or thing that we can do during this time is to wait on the love of the Father just as Jesus did while hanging on that cross. So we wait, we remain, we endure, we abide just like Jesus did. Friends, here's some good news for you today. As you wait, as you remain, as you endure, as you abide in Christ, you will be anchored in his love and you will experience his resurrection power and life. There's no doubt about it. So I'll leave you with his words today. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? I want to ask you today, how's your soul? Maybe you've been watching or listening to this message and you've never entrusted your soul or your life to Jesus I'm not just talking about the part of you that's going to go on after death. I'm talking about you right now, about your life today. Maybe you would say to me, Pastor Jason, I haven't been very honest about my soul or even my shadow. Well, this is why we're leaning in. This is why we're doing this together. Maybe you've come to the place in your life like many of us have where you know that you're not the best keeper of your soul. And maybe it's time to fully surrender and yield that to the one who created it the one who knows you better than you know yourself. Guys, there's nothing that's hidden that God doesn't see. The scriptures also say that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And we believe that. We believe Jesus is still in the business of saving and caring for our souls. If you're ready to say yes to that reality today, we want to invite you to pray this prayer with us. And it goes like this. Jesus, Savior, save me. Save me from myself. Save me from all the things that have kept me bound. I believe and confess that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on that cross for me and that God raised you to life again, Jesus. I ask that you would give me a new life of freedom and hope in you. Teach me your ways and care for my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make all things new. If you just prayed that with us, we want to say congratulations and welcome to the family. For those that just said yes to Jesus for the first time, 
We know that you are going to need some serious prayer and help in the days ahead. And we'd love to come alongside you as a church and help you. And here's how. You can go to CourageousChurch.com slash connect to fill out a digital connect card. This will help our team know how to best follow up with you and pray for you in the days ahead. We also want to come alongside you and help you take a few next steps. Speaking of those next steps, if you just said yes to Jesus for the very first time, we would be absolutely honored to help you get started in your journey to becoming a more courageous disciple and follower of Jesus. And here's how you can do that. You can go to CourageousChurch.com slash following Jesus to sign up for our online discipleship course. Here's the cool part. You can start anytime and complete it anywhere. You can use your smartphone or your computer or tablet, participate in video sessions that we've designed to help you engage core essentials to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. It's that simple, but we believe it will absolutely change and revolutionize your life. For those of you here in the Salt Lake Valley, we're currently gathering in person at our new building at 10702 South, 300 West in South Jordan, right off the 15 freeway. We'd love for you to come out and join us on Sundays at 5 p.m. We also have prayer nights on Tuesdays at 7. So if you're interested in any of that, please go to our website, CourageousChurch.com to get all the details. Courageous Church is your home church. We want to remind you and encourage you to honor God with your giving and your generosity. Your generosity puts God first. It allows us to do what we do best, which is to reach people with the hope, healing, courage, and life of Jesus and to advance God's good mission for the people of Salt Lake City, the Mountain West, and beyond. If you want to be a part of what this church is doing to make a difference, you can go to CourageousChurch.com slash giving to give online. Church, we love you. And we pray that your soul would prosper and be in health. You are God's masterpiece. You are his best. So be strong and be courageous. We'll see you next time.